Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 70. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. This episode has been trying to make happen since damn near Christmas, but you know when things happen, they happen. And I got a full uh, panel here, all star cast from around the country. Introduce yourself to the audience. Yo, it's your boy OTR Mike, man. One fourth of Off the Record Podcast, one third of the new podcast I'm rocking with called Ring Kings Podcast for all my boxing fans. Yeah, you're right. You hollered at me back around Christmas with this one, man. So. You know, right time, right place. So we making it happen. Keep well, going now. All right. Well, it's your boy, the other BTG. It's the other <laughs> BTG. You know what I'm saying? Baylor, what, the, I, AKA, <laughs> AKA Baylorism. <laughs> uh, the East Side cousin, Ring Honor Roll. Um, BTG for president, open run with BTG, the Breaks Radio, Black Horror Humor, and the Dating Pool Department. Yes, he has 57 podcasts. Working, working. Yo, yo, what's up? This is Uncle Face from the Bridge in the Gap podcast. Uh, the Philly, hashtag cut off kings. Hashtag Uncle the king around here. Let's pod, fellas. All right, damn. For all those who don't know, you know what I'm saying? Let them know where y'all from. Face did uh, throw out he's from Philly. International hype is not just a hashtag. This is a way of life. Yeah, we in Maryland, man. Baltimore area, DMV area, whatever people know it as, but that's where I'm at. Los Angeles, the sunshine, the sunshine state, east side. All right, copy that. Now, y'all know we got a long ass rundown, so sit down, relax, and get comfortable. All right, Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle World on Instagram and Twitter. That is my clothing line. You get your custom jerseys, jackets, uh, sweatsuits, t-shirts. We got the baby clothes in now as well. Get at me if you need it customized. Uh, H2H Cleaning at H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. You get at me there. It's a tri-state area situation. But if Mike needs his lawn cut down there, you know what I'm saying? Or he got a house needs cleaning out. If it makes it worth my while, I will slide down on him. Um, E-Block Radio Network. Every Monday, 2 p.m. on the E-Block Radio Network. Tuesdays, GFT Radio Network, 2 p.m. Wednesdays is 216 The Blend, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Thursday is WTNUPhilly.com at 1230. Friday, I say podcast radio network at 10 a.m., and Saturdays is the THC Media at 10 a.m. Looking to fill in that Sunday slot still, but on July the 31st, on a Sunday, 3 o'clock, 4901 Catherine Street, we will be doing How to Hustle Live Show. How to Hustle Live Show will be happening next Sunday night on July the 31st. Tickets can be available right now in my bio. Hit the event break, get your tickets now, or you call me and I'll slide up on you with the physical tickets. Shout uh, out. Announcements. Candle, that's one of the sponsors to that. Shout out at Santa Candle that will be vending at the live event. Copy that. Um, all right, so here we go, y'all. Episode 70. We lock loaded and ready. We got a full round table for the night. Ha! Ah, is it harder to be a father or a husband? This one we want to start with Mike since we tried to get OTR on here first. Mike, talk to us, baby. Yo, you know what? Ever since you, you know, you hit me the other day to, to say we really is going to make this happen, I've been thinking on it. <clears throat> and, yo, it's a tough one, right? And the one thing, the, 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 I guess the most consistent thought that came to mind was like, yo, I think they, I think they equally as tough. Uh-uh. You know what I'm saying? I do, but listen, but no, no, I got you. <laughs> I know you. I know you wasn't going to go for that. Right? It's got to be a 5149 here. Right. I know. Not preaching I know, equality. <laughs> I know you wasn't going to go for that. So, yo, I think I'm going to get a slight edge to being a husband. Mm. Okay. Right. Okay. This is slight edge, right? Now, this is this is why, and this is this is how I feel like why they 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 run neck and neck because, you know, the expectations on us, right, as men, especially black men, right, in the household period, and they and it might not even been 
placed on us. It, the expectations are placed on us by the world, right? Might not necessarily be your own house putting these expectations on you, but yo, you have you to go to for everybody, right? Your wife, you know, you want to make sure everything's good with her. Make sure she she she's uh you know good sound mentally and positive and all of that stuff. Your kids, you got to make sure that they are navigating this world the best way possible, especially how crazy shit is right now. Um, so then it comes to you, like you got to be able to put how you feel into the side sometimes. And I know BTG, you know, Baylor, like we, you know, we kind of, we throw cheap tweets at each other. You know, I'm a, I'm an avid listener and you, and you touch on this a lot of how, you know, you, who we talk to, right. You know what I'm saying? And not even going to who helps the helper type situation. Right. You know, not, not even going on the tip of with me and Baylor, like, you know, we have a similar situation with, you know, how things that transpired in our lives that we we want to eventually get to. But not even on that tip. It's just that that's just what's expected of, of the man. Like who, like we got to be able to table our feelings to make sure everybody else around us is good. Right. So, but I think, you know, if you got a good foundation with the wife and then hype, you and I talked about this before. If that if that foundation is set within your household and that's straight, then that's going to trickle down to the kids and everybody underneath you, right? So that's why I'm gonna get a slight edge to it's it's harder being a a, a, a husband than it is to be a dad because you got to make sure that foundation is crunk tight because if that breaks, I feel like everything under it collapsed, man. I got a homeboy who's going through unfortunately a divorce right now, man, and this. It's breaking them down, man. And it's hard to see and hard to watch. And part of that breakdown is just because the effect that is happening on his kids. You know what I mean? He's he's a stand-up dad. He's been that from day one, and he's gonna continue to be that. But it's it's hurting like to see what it how it's doing, how it's affecting him, his relationship with the kids, how the kids feel about this, how they taking it. And I, I'm seeing him at his at his weakest point, and that's the toughest part. So yeah, I'm gonna get a slight edge to to being a husband. BTG, Baylor, my bad. Let's, 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 let's East Coast or West Coast, man. I got, I got you, bro. I got you. What side? Come on, bro. Come on, man. Um, make no mistake, man. What Mike said is, is, is factual. Is it's very difficult being a husband, but I'm going to go the opposite route and say being a father is more difficult for for what we just finished witnessing within the past couple of weeks. You know what I'm saying? Sending your kids off to school. Like, you got to train your kids nowadays to be militant in order to survive in a world that keeps changing every damn day. You know, it wasn't until I was got into my 30s that I that I realized you learn, you learn so much, you might know what I'm talking about. You try to learn so much from your parents. And your parents at one point said, I hope whatever they got from me sticks with them when they're an adult. You know what I mean? Because after, and you know, in the black community, that 18, that number 18 is the lucky number to where we usually push off and say, all right, and you, you, you on your own. You know what I'm saying? The crazy part too, bro, be in June when I was a senior in high school, I was a kid. By the time we hit September, I'm an adult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So by that time, but a parent was still in the back of their head, hope that just think about all the wild shit that we went through. <laughs> Uh-oh. The other cut out. Go ahead, Face. Jump in there. Uh, so when you hit me, I had a little bit of time to think about it. And I would have to say, uh, being a husband is harder because kids don't have expectations of you, right? You just be dead, whatever that is to you, right? But I feel like when you're a husband, being a husband, it comes with expectations. And you have to meet those expectations and as crazy as it sounds like you really gotta consider another person before you do certain shit so i would say being a husband is harder than being a dad you know what i mean because of the like i said the kids don't have expectations of you like soon as you say i do to this person or take on to this person 
they now have expectations of you. Kids aren't born with expectations. You just be dead. You see what I'm saying? Whatever that shit is, they don't come with expectations. A partner, a marriage, all that shit, it comes with the stereotype of being like that. Like, like I was just talking about, everything that come along with being a husband, the man, the lead, whatever, that shit come with expectations. Being a dad is just fucking being a dad, whatever that is to you, bro. All right, so this was definitely a difficult one. You know I'm saying, and I wanted to make sure I had some strong uh, personalities on this one. This is why I held the topic for so long. Um, to touch on something that Mike said before I give my answer, who helps the helper situation? You got to get a room full of helpers in order to get help in that situation. We got to realize this is an old episode. I think it was maybe episode ten. Shout out to my man Tokyo Jameson. It was uh about is it uh. Your emotional availability there is we got to be in a situation with enough like minded individuals who all understand that you're dealing with the burden of your family, your kids, your wife, your nephews or whoever it is that you mentor or looks up to you. And if everybody is all in that room and that same understanding of each other, then we are we can be vulnerable to each other. This is the type of time that you have those type of conversations. This is when you get it off like where I can let my guard down and like, damn. Because once you go outside that door for everybody else, you got to be you got to be on it for, on top of everything. You are the guy that everybody's looking to when they want to know how we're going to do whatever it is. You're it. Now, to answer the question, though, I would say it's harder to be a father because when you have your first child, you look at this child and they can't do anything but breathe. You have to show them how everything is going to go. Because if it ain't you, it's going to be somebody else or something else that you don't want to influence them. And for the rest of forever, how you talk to them, how you dress them, how you interact with them, how you make them feel, if you hug them, if you ignoring them all the time because you and your phone doing nothing, all of that is going to shape who they are. Your wife, on the other hand, or your husband for a woman to flip it, they are who they are. They're going to evolve and turn into a different person. But your kids are going to be all of the shit that you teach them which is why you always say you want your kids to be a better version of you is because it's like you have the mistakes that you made. And it's like, look, I can guide you in a, I can't, or something I shouldn't have even said guide you. I can try to lead you toward a way where you can avoid these landmines if you won't listen because I know this shit because I've been through this shit. This other adult ain't listening to that shit because this other adult is going through their own shit and trying to exploit, I mean, exploit, why did I say that? It's trying to, <laughs> trying to tell their kids the same shit that they've been through and that they're going through. And like Face is saying with the expectations, the expectations of your kids is you're supposed to do everything for me. How many times your kids told you you're supposed to do this, that, whatever? <laughs> you're supposed to buy me some sneaks. You're supposed to get me something to eat. You're supposed to keep the lights on. You're supposed to keep the bills paid. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what your kids say. It's the same situation with your wife where, yeah, you're supposed to do all of these things, but your kids are throwing at you to the point where like, duh, dickhead, what you mean? <laughs> like, I, I, my, I didn't ask to be here. My kids would say, duh, the kids. They're not going to say it, but you get what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you were you. taught as a, my aunt taught me as a kid, you can't cuss the teacher out, but you can always look at him and think it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You right. can't flat out call him a dickhead, but you know what I'm saying? You look at him like, nigga, you were talking this dumb shit and you know you're going to feed us. You're not going to let us go to bed hungry. So, like, why are we even going through this? <laughs> Baylor's back now. Baylor got cut off. My bad. Go ahead, BTG. You were saying West Coast BTG. You were saying. <laughs> yeah, my fault. Apple tripping. Um, but hey, man, no, it, it, it's just <laughs> it's just it's just you know in, in today's world, we, you know, we're dealing with more um, emotional sensitive kids these days, and the the social media aspect and the music that they're listening to today and then you know i sound like an old cat now is is not is pushing them to be more emotional and and, and thought provoking like the cats is having suicidal thoughts uh in middle school and high school and, and don't get me wrong we had some of those cats back in the day but it was it, i think it's more publicized now like like we're starting to hear about it a lot and then and you know the first school shooting that i was ever aware of was Columbine, and I was like in the 10th, 11th grade. You know what I mean? And then after that, it just took off. This is what it is, bro. It's this right here. We connecting right now in three different cities. 
yeah. it's easily accessed for you to get to any and everything. So when they say, this is one of those things I always tell people, like, you can meet a nigga from Baltimore, a nigga from LA who thinks exactly how you think. Just because yeah. you're from Philly don't mean that y'all can't completely connect. So them little kids who having those types of thoughts and all of that shit, they're in groups. They're in the, what's the little game that they all fucking play? Uh, what is it, Roblox? Yeah. They in those chat rooms and shit talking to kids who are like-minded kids. They yeah. just happen to be in LA and Houston and Den- Denver and where the hell ever. So yeah. when this one says like, yo, this is what I've been going through and this is what I've been going through and I've been thinking about doing this. We just didn't have an outlet to be able to talk to somebody from across the country to think that because you know if you went downstairs and told your uncle or your cousin and shit, they was going to set you straight. Yeah, These yeah. kids are not talking to us because like I said, you can't be buried in the phone all the time. Every time they say, look, dad, I can do this and I can do that. And you're going, huh? What? Mm. What you yeah. say? That's what the problem is. Well, well, the other thing is like, I, you know, with me, with, you know, being married, um, you know, we already know you got to work on your marriage every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because because one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is that you actually do grow into a different person separately. So y'all growing apart, but y'all got to continue to work together to keep growing together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You start, like I said earlier, I might listen to music a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? My wife can't watch movies with a lot of a lot of violence because of her past. But I, that's what all I watch. So now we got to compromise. But that's us working on it. Eventually, dog, my kids are going to leave my house. And yep. every that I went through, I'm praying that they don't have to go. Just because you know? they leave your house, though, don't mean that they stop being, you know, they don't worry ne- about Nah, my, my daughter, my, by the grace of God, my daughter gets 40, 50 years old and, I, and, and, and and by the grace of God, I'm still living. If she say, Dad, I got a flat tire, I'm on my way. Yeah, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? So, the stress will always be there with my kids. I would never not be stressed out. You know what I'm saying? My, oh, yeah. my my marriage, I could work on that because now we just got to sit down and we got to duke it out 12 rounds. Right. And then we come together and then she going to get on her side of the bed. I'm on my side of the bed. But eventually your kids got to leave the nest. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why I say, and your kids are leaving the nest every day going to school. I was going just about to, to say that. Yeah, yeah. And, and now we got to worry about that. I got to worry about the intake, the, the 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 content intake that my kids are getting. I got to mm-hmm. worry about if they are actually protected in school. You know, my son is a teenager. He going to parties now. No, boy. We talking about parties. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, hey. do, we stay, do we stay in a much safer area than I did? We do, but that don't make it no better. You want to know why? Mm-hmm. Because these fake cats is more dangerous than the real cats. Mm-hmm. And they they ready to prove something yeah, to get a that's, name. That's some shit right there, ain't it? So that, that's, why <laughs> said, that, that's why I said, yeah, it might be it might be a fifty one forty nine because both of them stress me out. My wife stress me out, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I yeah, love like, my wife. She is a phenomenal human right? being. The yeah, great, I'm a, a great gift from God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna let my wife listen to this when she's drunk. But look, I'm, <laughs> all right, I'm about to get these bars off. She drives me bananas but that's my dog right there you yeah. know what i'm saying my kids on the other hand i got a daughter and i got a son so we knew how we used to be back in the day you know what i'm saying i've caught my son in lies and stuff like that my son want to be out until 12 one o'clock in the morning on the weekend because they having a house party and stuff like that i gotta worry about that you know what i'm saying my daughter it, she grew up in a very diverse area you know what I'm saying? She didn't grow up in LA. She grew up out here where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So she don't know nothing about racism, mm-hmm. nothing at all. You know what I'm saying? So when she when when a, when when she playing with her friends and and their grandparents come along and snatch their hand away and walk away without even saying bye, she like, what's that all about, Daddy? I yep. can't even explain that to her right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of things that is just like technology. Our weakness will always be technology because it advances every day. It changes every day. We got to catch up or whatever. And these kids are a part of this world. And, and that's what we got to worry about. My, my wife, we good, bro. We from the old school. We going we gonna to box it out a little bit, slap box in the, in the backyard, and then we're going to be cool. Go get some to eat. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Jump back in there. Nah, I mean, that that's why this was like, this topic, I mean, yo, like you always throw a topic and you it, it make you think. That's one thing, like about all the topics that we've discussed anyway. 
and then even listening to other topics you get everybody like you know it makes you think but this is one of those ones where it, it, you, it's no wrong answer right everybody is everybody's saying the same thing but just in different ways right mm -hmm. like you know me and me and east coast P, btg on the same page we feel like yo like that commitment to someone else you know it becomes a partnership then it becomes even more and like yo you just got you know that expectation on you sometimes like you said west coast btg is god damn they drive you crazy right but that's your dog at the end of the day you know what i mean but then going back to what both of you said uh bella and you hype like it yo the world is nuts and that's one thing i find myself randomly thinking about like i'm at work and i'm just like dang now my son three right now you know i got i got three non-biological that's older you know what i mean and and like you said you know my my oldest son he you know he 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 out he won't party now you know he got a little shorty now so it's like that conversation you know what i mean and it's it's but it's crazy man and i find myself thinking about even with my son being three i find myself like yo how this shit gonna be when he get to 10 12 14 and then you even start thinking about like damn i am i gonna be here to witness it you know it's crazy it's like that crazy thought but you just it's real like when you said barely that yo you never gonna stop stressing especially when it comes to your kids that is 100 percent facts and being a new parent you know i didn't know i didn't witness that until three years ago you know i was just like yo i hear people saying it and my mom used to say that to me every time y'all walk out that door I ain't sleeping. You think I'm sleep, but I that's ain't sleeping until I hear you come in. That's a fact. Because it's a different kind of pressure. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's yeah, man. See, but so, foundational, wait, wait. like, you know what I mean? Not to cut you off. Foundational, though, the importance, especially in the black house, household, though, like it, that whole weight, too. So, like, like I said, keeping that structure and then, like you saying, Baylor being able to go out back and duke it out, right, and not let the kids so much see it you know what I mean, or whatever, but just so that the, t that the parents see, I mean, the kids see that, yo, my parents, you know, I had that, I got that, you know what I mean, like, hey, Mike, see real that quick. strong structure. Mike, real quick, before, I'm sorry to cut you off, but before you finish, for the sensitive people out there, what I mean by duke it out, yeah, right, <laughs> we don't talk, because we know how y'all can't get down, y'all cancel us off of anything, I'm right. not beating my wife up, right. okay, you know, as she put her hands on me, sometimes, <laughs> love time. But no, we're not actually hashtag no domestics. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. I, not, I, not none of that. I'm glad you cleared that up, right? Because <laughs> you're right. <laughs> but yeah, like, I mean, it's all important. No, no matter way, no, no matter the way we all spend this, like, it is 100 percent important. That's why I think it's as close as a 5149. Either way you swing, it's mm -hmm. it's just it's just what it is, man. Face, jump back in there. Listen, I, this is a very informative episode, and I just want to be honest with all of you and say being a husband is probably the hardest fucking job that I've had to do in my life. I don't know, being a dad, having a son, I mean, I have a stepdaughter, but being a son, to me, that shit was easy. To me, it was easy because I just keep updating my data. Like, I keep, I keep up on the slang. I keep up with the music. I'm paying attention to the news, like West Coast said about sending your kids to school. I just keep updating my data. On, on being a dad, but when it come to being a husband, like what's cool said, like my wife get on my nerves too, but I love her to death. Being a husband is extremely fucking hard. It takes a, a, a amount of patience that we just ain't equipped with and to, to, to get it, you have to be married for a little bit. And, and I tell anybody, you know, that first stage of marriage is the hardest. Those first five years, we <laughs> niggas don't make it out of that first five years, dog. That yeah. first five years separate the boys from the men. Hey, go if, to football practice. All right, so hold up. Hold up. Five <laughs> years in marriage. Then no, right, now I want to hang around you because what you doing? Not like 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 you like you said. Oh, like, oh like, bro. <laughs> that is part. This is you touching into part three of why does marriage work? 
We're not going there right now. Oh. <laughs> Hey, he was getting his bars off. Hey, yeah. send that. Like, yo, hey. man, I let y'all go. I had to kick and my shit real quick, hey, man. Bro. I just, you know what I mean? I, I had to let it. off. Hard, no, hard. Hard. I got you. You will be on part three of Why This Marriage Work. BTG jumped on my ass, too, after the first part came off and said, bro, you had to hit me for this. I talked this marriage shit. <laughs> so I'm still, we still there. Why This Marriage Work is coming back. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. We're doing both sides of the wall right now. But oh, I was sitting here. I'm like, don't go. Don't go. He's going. Bring him back. Because I got a whole bunch of shit to still say about that. But yes, I'm coming up. Hey, when, hey once you go down that slope, bro. I'm saying, I'm coming up on year six right here. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations, <laughs> brother. Congrat- Congratulations, <laughs> brother. Congratulations. Damn. That's what I'm saying. Hold up. Don't step on that episode. Um, <laughs> shit. All right. So this is kind of like a over to go over like a lot of shit that everybody kind of said. Was one you talked about when you let them kids out the house, whether it be adults or kids, like Mike said, he's got a three year old. You still sending them to daycare somewhere, and then it's like, is everything cool? My daughter's school is mm-hmm. on the news. Me and my wife sitting there, one of the little kids walked out of her school and got three, four blocks down the street That's before, a- before just like one random lady said, "Hey, baby, what are you doing out here?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My daughter said nobody never said nothing at the school, never told them or nothing. They never alerted us on the app or no shit. Like, so do you go and always have them thoughts of like, like you said, your mom told you, like, I ain't sleeping until y'all get back in here. It's like a different type of uh pressure, a different type of worry, a different type of thing that you didn't even know exists until, like you said, until they come out and then you go, like, I, they don't know nothing. They don't know how to do nothing but breathe. And you got to put it all into them. And as far as your marriage, I mean, shit, everybody get on your nerves. Everything gets on your nerves because really getting on your nerves is I'm doing a bunch of shit that I don't want to do. And when you got a wife, you got a whole bunch of conversations you don't want to have, a bunch of compromises you don't want to make. You over here at Mike's house on the Saturday at the baby shower when you really didn't want to be there. You wanted to be chilling and watching the game. You at Face House over here at a wine tasting when you wanted to be on the deck smoking some meat. You know what I'm saying? This is not what you're trying to do, but you're compromising all of these different situations to make it all work out. Because like you said, without this woman, like, I need this woman. This woman is, yeah. she's it. If I chose out of the world to marry you, hey. I, didn't get, I didn't get married to get divorced. I didn't no. get married so that I could say I used to be married. You know what I'm saying? On, Go ahead. On the, on the flip side, you got to look at it like, yo, she compliments you. You know what I mean? Because where, where you lack at, that's where she gonna hold you up at. This the killer part, though, Mike. Yo, when we talk about all our kids, they at different stages. You know what I'm saying? I got a six year old. I got a sixteen year old. You know what I mean? He's. I still have to worry about teaching him how to be in the young adult. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got to teach her. She, my my daughter's not a teenager yet. You know what I mean? So I, you got to go through all these stages with your wife. I don't know how long y'all been knowing and been with y'all wife, but y'all got some history. You know what I mean? With your kids, it's a new experience every year that you are unaware of unless you have multiple kids. And even then, that's different because every kid is not the same. Yep. Yeah. And you the problem is most people don't even realize that until you get to child number two or three. Like, well, such and such didn't do it like this. She and child number that. two he didn't do that. And child number two, I don't know what it is, but they automatically be on some Tupac DMX shit <laughs> out the gate. Just watch child number one and study everything they did and what you let them get away with. So now they maneuver around all that. So child number two is going to send you through the ringer all the time, no matter yeah. what. No matter what. My daddy is, that's why daddy is strict as hell. <laughs> 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 yeah, hey, 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 at the at the end of the day, dog, I, I hear y'all when it comes to the marriage stuff, but let your kid get bullied. Hmm. Yeah, and look, 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 and I don't even know y'all personal background like that. Oh no, I got but, two but, calls but, about my, I got two, three calls about my daughter, and I was up, I was at the school on on fire. Hey, look, <laughs> I know y'all from Philly. I know y'all from Baltimore. That's all I need to know. Okay, <laughs> somebody bump up in your kid or messing with your kid the wrong way. You willing to go to jail? Yes, sir. 
You willing Nigga, to go we, to jail? We was on a stakeout in the morning. My wife came, scooped me from work. We sitting in the car. All right, so which one is it? He got on a green book bag. We looking for a green book bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all on the stakeout for an eight-year-old. Yeah, where you at? Mm-hmm. We're trying to find out where he at. But with, with, with the wives, dog, what, one thing I found out about marriage is that a, a lot of cats is going to laugh at me, and a lot of women might be, I approach it like, like they a bully. Oh yeah, 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 you talk. Uh, let's talk about it. You want to talk about something? Let's talk about it right now. Let's go right now. Because if you prolong it, that's when they get the courage to keep nagging. No, let's talk about it right now. You know what I'm saying? With my kids, is like they look up to you. Are a superhero. Yes, sir. Out the gate, dad can do this. My dad can beat your dad up. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I think they ain't never seen you fight a day in your life. My dad can whoop your dad's ass, and I know this. You know what I'm saying? So, and they watch everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 one of the most heartbreaking things, dog, is now I'm starting to realize that coming from a broken home is that in broken homes is is killer. Yes. It's killer to a kid, you know. And and that all starts with going to y'all point. It starts with unity between the your, your partner you know what i mean so y'all y'all need that but it's like even when y'all have unity you still got to raise them right you still got to do that that's still a job it's yeah. something that you just touched on that i meant that i meant to go into too uh it you always have to have that united front in front of the kids like i said something if you listen to the podcast every week it's something that i keep touching on but it's like really important that people don't understand is that the kids know what's going on if you can remember shit from when you was five and it was 30 years ago why do you think that the eight-year-old doesn't remember shit from when they were five yeah yeah so you have to pay attention to the fact that this kid is paying attention this kid is watching so we can't have little back and forth bickering and little arguments. Little shit turns into big shit when you continue mm-hmm. to let it fester. So yep. it's like, even if we have a co-parenting situation or whatever, that we still have to have a united front in front of these kids. Mm-hmm. Because all the thing about the kids is it's all about what gets normalized to them. If you continue to show them chaos, guess what they're going to think is normal. If you show them structure, that's what they're going to think is normal. If you show them love and accountability, that's what they're going to think is normal. Now, you also still going to have them individuals who go, it was always chaos at my house, and that's just never what I liked, and I'm going to go the complete opposite way. Mm -hmm. It was always structured at my house, and I didn't like that, and I couldn't wait to get to my cousin's where the lights might not have been on, and the cable might have been off, and all Mm -hmm. that type of shit. So you can't be 100% with any of these things, but you have to be to the best of your abilities Y'all too, you and your wife, you and your husband for a woman on an even accord to the point where we're showing them structure. We're showing them discipline. We're showing them that the world doesn't owe you shit. It's one of them things I also tell people all the time. Like if you spoil your kids, all you do is make bad adults. Because if you send them out into the world thinking that the world owes you shit, guess what they're going to then always do? They're either going to always lean to you or they're going to always have an excuse why they ain't doing shit. Yep. And they gonna always say it's because Bella ain't bring me in to come do this, or Face didn't ask me to do it. Like nigga, you did the interview with them. Why is they calling you? Right. Like they don't need you. You need their job. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and then I mean to what BT what Bella was saying, like <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just again, man, it's that circle. Like it just listening to y'all talk. Like again, everything makes sense to me, but it's just that I feel like it's that it's an answer to everything. You know what I mean? All all sides are are making sense, but you know, on the parenting side, you know, I feel like just like you, your point, Baylor. Like you find out somebody uh some somebody bullying your kid, you ready to you ready to go to jail, right? And I think that's the natural. How's somebody bullying your wife though? I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, I got goons for that, but that's what I'm saying. I'm, rich. <laughs> I'm we already my, first of all, my wife can handle her, he, she can handle her lightweight. They can beep the horn at my wife in traffic, and it's like, yo, cuz you did not just beep the horn at my wife. <laughs> like, hey, I hey, know you, you didn't. You want to know what's crazy is that we all had four different perspectives, right? And and we gotta realize, and I hope the listeners really listen to this. Dog, you see what we got to deal with? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Deal with? It's real, yeah. man. Yeah. Fatherhood and being a husband, bro. It's, it's, it's hard, bro. I need, 
hard being, it's hard being it's hard being a black man, but down here is though. Down here is though. Yeah. But it's, that's why I said, you know what I'm saying, we got to create these type of forums where you sit down, have a real discussion, a real conversation. Something Mike said, like, damn, it really makes you think. When I send you this topic and tell you, yo, I want you to be on episode whatever of the How to Hustle podcast, I want you to say, damn. I don't want you to just know already what you're going to say to the answer, to the question. Mm-hmm. I want you to think about what you, I want you to have to think about what you're going to say. And this is why I always say my category is shit that makes sense. Because you ain't going to never come here hitting the button. Appreciate you hitting the button. You're never going to come here and say, that didn't make no sense when they said this, that, whatever. Because mm-hmm. even if the if the guest that I'm having that particular week isn't making any sense, a paid talent, baby, I'll reel you in. I'll get you <laughs> where I want you to go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so before we close this one out, though, y'all, I appreciate y'all for coming on. I need everybody, you know what I'm saying, run back through your rundown, because uh, I see we all have multiple things going on. Run back through your rundown and let them know where to follow you and all that good stuff. Mike, you started off. Yeah, man, I'm on I'm on Twitter, man. Follow me up at OTR underscore Mike. Like I said before, I'm one fourth of off the record podcast. I like to say the real off the record podcast. It's another one out there. I saw but, that. You know, but you know, I like to, I got lawyers or something. I just Tell say them, that. Mike fraud right. niggas fraud stories. <laughs> <Let them know>. <laughs> <Mike>. <laughs> I got lawyers, you know, I like to start the show like that. But and then I'm one third of Ring Kings podcast, man, for my boxing fans. Check that out. Something new. We 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 about three months in so check follow that up we on every we every social media every listening platform we on youtube so give us a, a subscription a subscribe whatever they call that and a like and yeah man appreciate it thanks for having me on too man we're gonna go east coast btg <laughs> right listen man this uncle face the youngest member of the btg bridging the gap podcast no g Bridging the Gap 215 out of Philly. Shout out to the Brains. Shout out to Onk. Um, you can catch us every Sunday on YouTube, uh, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts. Um, again, we like to refer to that as all streaming platforms. Yeah, I just wanted to get it out there. All streaming <laughs> platforms. <laughs> Shout out to Uncle B was on last week's episode, Both Sides of the Wall Part 3. Uh, Bridging the Gap 215. Click the link tree in the bio, like and subscribe. Tap in with us, man. Tap in with us, man. Appreciate you having me, yo. I appreciate it. All right, y'all. Sit back and relax. Baller's about to go through his rundown. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, real talk. This is how the universe works. On my TV right now, it's taken. Out of all the movies in the world, taken is on right now. So yeah. Yeah. um BTG for president, open run with BTG, part of the Rare Signers Network, uh, Black Horror Humor. What's the other one? The Breaks Radio, shit, the Lunch Break, and the Dating Pool Department. The Dating Pool Department is my clothing line. Y'all can tap in with me with that. If you have dating issues, I'm not saying I can help you. I'm not saying I want to help you, but I'm going <laughs> to make fun of it. Um, and I do most of my damage on Twitter, at Baylorism, and TikTok, at Baylorism. Copy that. Uh, BTG, I need I need some of the West Coast love on his radio side of things. I'm still trying to get out there. So we're going to have to talk about that. <laughs> um, I, I know I, I, I know, I know, it's one online joint, but I ain't got no connections to that one. Point me in the direction, nigga. I connect the situation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, all right, y'all. I appreciate y'all all coming on, though. Like I said, that's episode 70. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>